Yeah, it, it doesn't taste great, but. Oh, crap. Welcome to episode three of Project Cheapskate. This one's gonna go a little bit different. I totally messed up the audio at the beginning and it will get fixed later. As you can see on our test drive after the transmission, we had a check engine light. That check engine light was 2A82 for intake vano. So I'm gonna start off by pulling the solenoids and we're gonna see just how dirty or not those guys are. The oil in this car is pretty terrible. And then we're gonna go about cleaning them. You can see right here, eh, it doesn't look terrible, but also probably not in the best of shape. So you might be asking yourself, why did you decide to clean the solenoids instead of replacing them? Well, one, money. Uh, they're pretty expensive. I did buy, honestly, a set of Chinese solenoids on Amazon just in case, but I wanted to follow a decent diagnostic path here that I think most people should go down. This car has 177,000 miles on it. So what I did was I used this brake clean here to see if I could clean the solenoids as much as possible with a brush. And then I'm going to swap them, intake and exhaust, since they're the same, and see if the fault follows the solenoid. If it follows the solenoid, we know it was the problem. If it doesn't, we need to continue down our diagnostic path. Now, in my case, I was able to get the solenoids to move using my little brush. And you can see here, I'm doing the shake test to see if I can hear anything moving in there as well. Everything seems to be functioning. So I went ahead and reinstalled these guys back into the motor. I've got some seafoam running through there right now as well. Seven ounces, one ounce per quart of oil. That way I can see if uh, it will help to break up any of the debris or anything going on that might be plugging the system. The oil in this is pretty old and I'm not really sure when it was changed last, but we're gonna be addressing that here shortly. So as I'm buttoning this up, I decided that since I don't know when the oil was changed on this, there is no dipstick to actually get a read on the oil. I was gonna pull the oil filter out and just take a look at it. At this point, I have a spare oil filter that I was thinking I would throw in here while the seafoam was running through the engine, just to double check and see if I couldn't catch any particulate matter or debris. Now, I noticed right away when I started opening this filter up that I had a problem. Normally, when you open the filter, it drains back. This one wasn't draining back, and it wasn't draining back for good reason. One of the common issues that causes Vanos problems is the inside of your oil filter housing cap breaks off. And that center section there that I'm identifying, that's the problem in this case. Now, that's not actually the problem that's causing the Vanos, but it's a problem in general. So after this uh, work here that I was doing, I went ahead and I ordered a filter cap. I put this guy back together with this filter, with the, or with the new filter and the old filter cap for the time being while I'm running the system full of seafoam. That way anything can break down and I'll replace that when the new cap comes in. Well, it's been two weeks. I've been driving the car as much as possible given that, well, it's my only car. And the Vanos fault came back. Unfortunately, Vanos fault came back on the intake side for 2A82. So I've got a couple of ideas as to what could be the problem here. As you can see behind me, I've been working on some other things like a uh, diesel problem that I'm having, an oil leak problem that I'm having, but we're gonna keep those items for another video. We're gonna keep moving forward in this video. We've swapped the solenoids. I actually have a pair of new solenoids, but being that the fault stayed in the intake bank, I can't imagine that the solenoids are the problem. I do think that there's an issue with the oiling on this car, mainly the fact that the oil smelled putrid and it came out like tar. I don't think it was regularly being changed. I was running seafoam in it for the last 150 miles. It's been drained out. I'm gonna put fresh oil in it, but while I have it drained, what I wanna tackle next as far as trying to do this simply is on the bottom of the cylinder head, at the front, there are two check valves with screens for the Vanos system. They're supposed to maintain oiling pressure to the Vanos as well as clean oil to them. They do get plugged up. It's not a very common thing, but it is a thing. So I'll pop a picture up right here of what they look like cause I can't really fit a camera down in there. And then we'll pop them out and see how they look. 
So you saw what they look like in the repair instructions. Let me see if I can get a good view of them here. If you look down on the mirror there, you can see right at the bottom, there's a T40 there and a T40 there. Those two little silver plugs in the head. Those are what we have to try to get out. And you can see they're down below that metal bracket right there. That makes it a little tough to get to. I haven't gotten these out yet, obviously. They're right above the AC compressor. Keep blocking my light so you can't see. We'll see if this comes up on screen there. There you go, now I think you can see them pretty well right there. So we'll try to get those out. I'm using a T40, a locking extension, and probably a lot of patience here. When you reach down, you can feel them with your finger. This is one of those things, you know, I talk about mechanics better working blindfolded because you have to guess at what you're feeling and seeing down there. I think these are interchangeable, so I am gonna try to swap these guys top to bottom as well. All right, there it is. The screens look remarkably clean. So then the next question is, is the valve inside good? In order to test that, you gotta do the blow test, and it's pretty gross right now. So I'm gonna clean it first. I'm gonna keep these separate though. So this is the bottom valve. And FYI, they're a pain in the butt to get out. This O-ring is machined, or not the O-ring, the cylinder head is machined to nearly the same tolerance as this O-ring. So you back out the threads and it just sits there. Doesn't fall out, it's aluminum, so you can't pull it out. So what I wound up doing was spinning it enough times to get a little oil lubrication on there, putting my socket in and trying to pinch it sideways and put some pressure on it and pull out. Eventually that worked. My suggestion would be to put a little bit of lube in the channel before you try to take them out. They'll probably come out much easier. See on the end here, it looks a little bit burnt. The screen moves nice. I'm just soaking these in a little bit of brake clean. There's a little bit of chunks coming out. You can see some debris in the screen, but not much. Again, we wanna keep these separate so that we can follow our diagnostic path here. This was the top, and we're gonna put the top and the bottom and the bottom and the top here, see if our fault changes or comes back. So we've got these guys clean. Now we want to double check that they're functioning. The oil flows through the screen, through the check valve, and into the cylinder head, which means we don't want oil flowing back that way. One of the checks I've seen people do is the shake test. Let's see, my microphone's right here. You can hear it kind of clicking in there. But we also want to check that it's actually holding pressure. So you want to blow back this way I've cleaned them off the best I can. I mean, this is one of those things as a mechanic, you just like, whatever. So the top one is holding pressure. Now you wanna make sure it's allowing fluid through, right? <laughs> kind of a brake cleany flavor. So the top one holds pressure, allows pressure through. Bottom one shakes, holds pressure. Yeah, it, it doesn't taste great, but you'll get over it. Just deal with it. So they both work. I don't think these were the problem in my case. I, I think the camshaft control rings might be my problem. The last thing you can do to check them is there is a passageway where the oil flows through. You can put a light on it and see if I can cover up most of this light. And then you should be able to see through there nicely. If there's any blockage inside, you definitely have a different problem because that means debris was getting through your filter. So I'm gonna put these back in. Among the other repairs that I'm doing, uh, those shouldn't affect the Vanos operation other than changing the oil. 
and then we'll drive it again after we clear the faults and hopefully 2A82 doesn't come back. I want to make sure I'm double checking all my bases here and I went ahead and I pulled the solenoids back out because when I cleaned them before, all I did was run compressed air through them and brake clean and shake them back and forth and pull them through with my, my cleaning brush. This time, I wanted to electrically actuate them. So what I did was I made a little connector harness here with a fuse in line that I can plug into the power. I made a couple connectors for this side and then I heat shrinked them so that they couldn't contact one another. And then on this side, I'm just gonna contact to ground to actuate it. And as I'm doing that, I can feel it opening and closing. I can see it opening and closing and it's ingesting the brake clean. You can see the bubbles. And I decided to control the circuit on this side so that there was no spark on that side every time I actuated. Let me move the camera up closer and you'll be able to see. So let's see if the bubbles continue in there. Yep, there's bubbles. Okay. I'll let that drip just a little bit. And then actuate some more. Hopefully that's coming through on camera. It is in fact moving and it feels like it's reaching the end of its movement. So I'll clean this out some more and then I'm actually going to do that same thing in oil before I put it back in and who knows, maybe that will have helped. Spoiler alert, it didn't help. I did all that work, put everything back together and the check engine light was back immediately. The symptoms that I'm having are a long crank after sitting for a little while and a check engine light. My gas mileage is pretty good and it drives actually pretty well. Now I was recording a bunch of other things at the same time that I was recording this video and some of that footage got misplaced. This, this filming thing is hard. So the long crank, only after it's been sitting for a while, and I would say a mild loss of power, but my gas mileage isn't bad and a check engine light. Those are the symptoms right now. On occasion, when I go to start the car, I'll get this clunk out of the front, somewhere in the engine. I'm guessing it's, maybe it's the Vanos unit is hitting its max retard or max advanced position, something of that nature, because it's in the wrong spot. I have a feeling that there could be something wrong with the um, intermediate sensor as well, because when I check the uh, readings for the intermediate shaft based on the eccentric sensor, it says that it wants to be at one spot, but it's eight degrees off. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna end this video with this didn't fix it. You might be experiencing some of these same symptoms and chasing the same problem. One of the other things that it could be is it could be the control rings for the Vanos on the camshaft. Earlier engines had metal control rings and later had Teflon. Those control rings will wear into the clamshells and cause oil bypass, so the Vanos isn't gonna operate properly. I really hope that's not the case in this instance or in your instance even, because on the N52, the clamshell is part of the cylinder head. That would suck. But I ordered a bunch of Amazon parts, timing tools, all sorts of things for this motor, and we're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna test it out and we're gonna see what happens. I'll go ahead and start the car up right now and you'll see if it takes a while to start or not. Now, mind you, I was driving earlier, so we'll see. Eh, that wasn't really too bad. Let's see if it does the idle thing. Yep, there it is. A little bit of an idle bounce. Sometimes that idle will bounce up over 1100 RPM. This time it just kind of bounced a little bit. It is surging a little. But you can see I've put about 83 miles on since I put everything back together and still that stupid yellow light. I just got to move my vantage point up a little bit and I can't see it anymore. Now there's a light. Now there's no light. 
now there's a light. We'll see how long it takes to get all of my parts and for me to get this thing ripped apart and if I can fix it. Hopefully it's not the cylinder head and it's one of the components up front. I really appreciate you watching. Like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what's been happening with your cars. Have you experienced this problem? Have you run into a dead end like me? I'm not solving the problem in this video because I, I haven't solved it. And I'm just being real with you that sometimes this happens. Thankfully, the car runs and drives since this is my primary mode of transportation. And, well, I guess I'll see you in the next one.